Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I'm Noah Ruiz, the designer here at Adafruit. What's up, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, the creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to bring you 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is the show where we bring DIY electronics, 3D printer. We mash them together and make cool projects to help you guys and inspire you guys to get it into 3D printing and DIY electronics. That's right. We go over techniques on modeling, some slicing tutorials, Let's go ahead and check out the segment for this week's show. All right, let's jump right into it. So first, first up, we got what are you prototyping? That's right, so when we go behind the scenes of some of the upcoming projects we have for you guys, we take a sneak peek at what we're working on. That's right, we've got some 3D news. Every week we scour the new, the, every week we scour the internet for 3D printing news that's interesting around the world. There's always something cool coming going on in the world in 3D printing. That's right. Then we'll take a look at our weekly video. That's right. Every week we bring an awesome 3D printed project for you guys. This week it's some awesome tips on how we do a lot of our prototyping for projects, standoffs. All right. And then something a little bit different. We're going to answer some questions from you guys on YouTube. That's right. This is a new, new segment. Ooh, very excited about this one. This is pretty cool. That's right. So before we, we start, we'll go ahead and let you guys know we got a coupon code for you guys. Standoff, get yourself 10% off. That's right, use that code during checkout. You get yourself some awesome 3D printed accessories or some 3D um, or some electronic parts for your next 3D printed project. Just use standoff during checkout, you get 10% off. Expires at 11.59 p.m. Doesn't work on software or gift certificates. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what you're working on. Pedro, you've been working on some cool stuff. I'm gonna start with you and let people know what you got for us. All right, so next week's cool project is gonna be the Little Sister Syringe from Bioshock. Just wanted to show a sneak peek at the sort of cross section of how the um, wires are. The um, internals. Internals of it, yeah. Very cool. So, so the highlight got? here is that you can print movable parts using the copper fill filament. So oh. we got this cool little spring here that is actuating the tactile button on there. Works wonderful for the copper fill. Also, a cool thing that we were trying to do with the Amber 3D printer was to make a completely clear vial that we could fill with liquid to sort of you know, illuminate the um, red inside there. Uh, the problem that we ran into though is um, there's some suction problems which we'll talk about in the new section that happens with those type of SLA DLP printers in which it turns into sort of like a um, sponge when it's lifting out of the um, vat to do its little separation technique. More like a so, plunger. So what it's doing is, yeah, it's sort of acting like a plunger. So it's printing this way up and going in and out. And as it's going back in, it's sort of, you know, doing like a little suction on the <laughs> you bed. You actually hear it suctioning. Yeah, so I tried this several, <laughs> you know, times several, to try. Like, more than five. Maybe. Yeah, about 10 times. So yeah. every single time that we tried this, we always got little bubbles and artifacts that totally you know, eliminated um, it you know, this leak. being used. Yeah, it would probably leak. Yeah, so the water tightness is you know, pretty watertight all the way up until here where we see all the bubbles. So we couldn't go with that. We had to um, end up using the translucent red PLA, which we should hopefully have in the shop pretty soon. It even illuminates a little bit better too. So I love the look of this stuff. In there. Yeah, it gives a really Let's cool see. contrast tones to it. So yeah, definitely keep on the lookout for that. Some cool new um, translucent colors coming your way. Um, okay. That's just part of the part of, you know, um, testing prototyping, stuff testing yeah. stuff we out. We thought it was a really good idea, but it didn't work out. And it wasn't like it was too thin. It was just uh, sort of the nature of, of, of the thing. Yeah, I, I really tried. Yeah, I tried different wall thicknesses. I tried different orientations. So um, we are in full drony season. We got drony fever over here. Here I am um, flying, trying out a new drone here. This is the Hudson X4. Uh, 107. 107. Yeah. yeah. So Becky was asking in the Iris Plus forms on uh, Facebook, if you guys haven't checked that out, definitely check that out. They always post a lot of awesome videos there, like firmware upgrades and, you know, little techniques. Questions, tips, Cool guy answers. on there that has a lot of 3D printed parts for, um, you know, customizing your Iris. But Becky was asking how, you know, tips on how to, you know, get better flying experience. And every one of the members there suggested the Hudson. Check you know? out the Hudson X4, man. Yeah, the 107C, mm -hmm. which is what we got here. It's got a cool little um, 720p little camera, so you can do a cool little droney. As you can see here, I'm just, you know, trying to get, you uh, Get your flying in here. My flying in around the studio here. And what I love about this is just how tiny these are with yeah. the little camera in there. I mean, you can't beat the price for $50 too. This is excellent training wheels. This thing flies really, really high. We went to the park over the weekend and we started to see 
you know, how far can we get this thing, and what kind of sh what kind of aerial shots can we get? Oh my God, look at this! I can see like the whole park here, and then, yeah. then some. It's a very, very cool machine. We actually want to carry it in the Adafruit shop just because it's such a good entry level uh, drone to get your uh, to get sort of training wheels going. Yeah, we love the way that the innards are. We uh, actually tried another uh, one of the little tiny drones. You might have seen the uh, internal circuitry of that. I love the way that everything's all integrated. They you're able to swap out parts, oh, yeah. body parts. Um, the it's not going to be the you know the best video or you know the best stabilized, but for fifty dollars you can't really go wrong yeah, for you know learning to, how to yeah. you know fly the bigger uh, quadcopters when you get up to that point. That's right. So what are we going to do with this thing, right? Okay, we're so gonna we're obviously going to three D print yeah. something for this, right? So whole body. Obviously, we can you know completely take this apart. Um, we are thinking a Planet Express ship from, from Futurama. Yeah. So we've been seeing a lot of cool like speeder bikes, Star Wars themed uh, things of. Um, you know, making your drone look like a Star Wars ship. So we want to try to do it a little bit more cartoony, but still cool. Futurama Planet Express ship would be really cool. But if you guys have any suggestions, you can let us know in the comments and we'll take a look at it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So that is what we're working on that. And of course, don't forget our Drony Awards that we're also holding. That's right. Check out the uh, blog for more details on, uh, you know, yeah, we're giving away- It's our film festival. It's, um, def more details are coming out. We're still working on all the details and stuff, but it is definitely happening. If you want to win this awesome trophy, that's right, printed in it out. Uh, bronze fill, um, cool little uh, spinning propellers here, oh, yeah. the best droney uh, film yeah. that is out there. Just tag, hashtag droney, and you can, uh, we'll enter you into the contest. That's right. Check out the Adafruit blog for more info on that. All right, that's going to be it for our prototyping segment. How about we take a look at some news, huh? Go ahead and jump into some cool news for this week. All right, this is a really cool one. Probably one of the best applications for 3D printing, prosthetics. And this is not just a regular prosthetic, this is a robotic. Yeah, just check prosthetic. out the intricacies of the movements. This is a cool one. This was at South by Southwest, so it got a lot of publicity there. Really good uh, place to showcase stuff. Tell me a little bit more about the hardware and what's going on here, Pedro. Yeah, so this, uh, these guys have been working on this since 2013. Their goal is to um, release like a uh, sub, you know, $300 robotic, uh, or bionic. Um, mm -hmm. Prosthetic hand. Prosthetic hand, yeah. So these are graduates from Sony's manufacturing industry. Um, nice. They're trying to cut costs by using um, smartphone apps to communicate with the sensors. Okay. So those are, uh, they're using like EKG to um, detect, uh, you know, what the limbs are uh, wanting to do so they can send that data over to um, all the little motors inside the fingertips there to activate, you know, the sort of um, Does each grips. finger have a servo? How does this work? Yeah, each little finger has a little uh, motor inside there. So they're all customizable, easy to repair. You can like change the texture colors, obviously, oh, wow. on that. Um, they are even looking to open, open source, source this oh, wow. um, to you know technical universities that can you know really benefit from this. Their um, whole approach is to sort of release this as um, you know something something you can wear like glasses. So they're really looking at at it as you know sort of uh, fashion minded. Um, I love it because I mean if you ever seen Ghost in the Shell, man, it really sort of resembles that. I love it. Yeah, so, so cool. here we see the EKG, um, you know, sort of reacting um, with the smartphone there on, uh, you know, the sort of uh, how much pressure and all that stuff yeah. to um, apply to all the fingertips. And it's really cool because they've tested it on really oblong shaped um, oh, items like to like make that? sure that okay. it can pick things up. And uh, it's able to lift things that are, you know, about 500 uh, grams. Okay. So pretty good dexterity that we have there. Of course, all, all the parts printed, are 3D yeah. printed. This, could, this is definitely going to have been could not have been done without 3D printing. Oh, yeah. So yeah, definitely be on the lookout for this. They um, are a successful crowd-funded campaign in uh, Japan. They're looking to release this pretty soon. It's coming. Okay. Really cool. Check it out on the blog if you want more info and keep your, guy, keep your eye out on this one. This is a really cool project. Okay, we, next up we have a cool update from Mr. James Burton from X Robots. Every week he's got a cool update to his projects this week. It's an update to the R6 Droid. This is a fully 3D printed droid that moves around. It's controlled RC. Very, very cool. But in this project, he's, he's working on the head mechanism. So he's um, figuring out the right um, electronics. So he's got a DC motor here and several bearings. And he's going to attach it to the rest of the body. So, and, and most of his projects, he, he goes through the CAD and all the intricacies that he goes into sort of separating the parts for his bed. And he's using a uh, bunch of Lulzbot 3D printers to print the, the parts there. 
Very, very cool. Yeah, and he releases all of the 123D files so you could print your own. Yeah, it's on GitHub, so he's been updating them as he goes, and it's very fun to watch him build these things and learn things um, as he's, as he's uh, coming up with different approaches. He's also using NinjaFlex for the, for the uh, Timing V-Belt. Belt. Yeah. So there he is, um, all strapped on and mounted, glued together, and there it is working. Yeah, very, it's a very, very cool. awesome approach. He's making an open frame design for the entire droid, so you can see all the components, all the yeah. lights that are going to be in there. Can we see all of that completely finished? Which uh, is super close. Yeah, check it out. Uh, we got a link for you in the blog, and of course, subscribe to James on his YouTube channel, X Robots. Okay, next up. Next up, we have a super small fast DIY company. 3D printing. Oh my God! So you guys probably heard about the carbon 3D printer, right? It made a huge rounds. The TED Talks. So many people were talking about it, with saying it's the Terminator-like style 3D printing. What is this? These guys seem to have completely won up those guys by creating their own DIY. Um, what do they call it? Like clip, clip style, you know, Terminator style 3D printer. With just so, a week. In a week, they've come up with this? This is, this is too crazy. Too no, I'm to sure they've been working on it for a okay. while. So tell me some details about it. So um, one of the issues that we were talking about earlier is with all bottom-up style DLP 3D printers um, oh, is suction, the yeah? suction that happens on bigger parts. As we were saying, with the bottle as it's going down and separating, it's um, sort of you know, acting like a plunger and getting stuck on the window there where the, um, you know, the DLP is being shined through. This is completely emerged inside of the resin, and it's being printed um, top down. Actually, okay, that's the only printer that kind of does that. Really, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, so here um, they're able to print bigger objects with uh, larger walls, so you don't have any of those problems. Another one of the um, things that you run into with having a bed that moves is that uh, if you say you're printing something with 10 microns, you have all that fine little detail that's actually swooshing and like, you know, going through all that resin as it does its little separation, um, you know, the procedure. You're, you're dragging these little fine detailed prints through all this resin. You're creating all this wake as it's going across inside of the, um, the tray. This is leaving it completely undisturbed um, so you can print bigger objects, more finer detail, and a lot more faster. Yeah. As you can see there, if you um, skip through I to the been. end too, it's very cool. Yeah. You can see how it emerges out of there. They have these cool little holes inside of the build plate sure. to allow the resin to um, seep down through. And as far as chemistry, you know, there are going to be um, less things that they have mm. to use. Like uh, maybe they don't need UV blockers, so because you don't have to worry about the window being clogged up. Uh, like okay. the the amber style, or I think sure, the yeah. B. What was the other one? The, the B nine creator. The B nine creator yeah. uh, uses Here the same technique. Emerging out, and I really like that they their their goal is to get a machine in people's hands. They uh, want to go with the Kickstarter approach, and they're thinking about a price range of around three thousand dollars, which is spot on for a, for a, uh, a resin based printer. And look at these parts, man! Very very big parts. Very cool. Uh, definitely keep your eye out on this project. This is going to be a big one. Yeah. So this is from an Australian company. Gizmo 3D, and um, can't wait for um, future updates on yeah, uh, this where this goes. Yeah. Awesome, so yeah. keep your eye on it. We've got a link for you guys in the description. Definitely check it out. Yeah, they said they were um, going to release these to beta testers first. So oh, we can make right, sure. Yeah. Like I would love to test this. If you guys, <laughs> we would love to test your machine, so let us know if you're watching. <laughs> All right, next up, we got a pretty cool one. Fully 3D printed. Mechanical, mechanical keyboard. keyboard. This is really cool. Tell me about this one. Yeah, so this is from Adam Forland, who uh, just printed into, this yeah. entire keyboard. He's like, I he just I, got into mechanical keyboards, really fell in love with it, and wanted to create his own customized layout. So he went ahead and 3D printed all the keys, laid everything out, and used a, um, laid out all the circuits, and used a Teensy to do, uh, to control all the keys. Very cool. So he picked up a couple Cherry MX switches for about like 30 bucks and just $5 of ABS material to make all the things. So he saved quite a bit of money. Cause, oh yeah, cause he the, saved uh, about the $100. Yeah. yeah, they're about a, a buck 30. But this is really cool, very ambitious. And it's very unique as well. If you look, all the keys are kind of the same, huh? So it's very different. Yeah, from, you gotta uh, know where they all are. Yeah. Nice, so he uh, chopped this in half so it could fit on his build plate. Uh, okay. He used a Taz uh, Mini okay. to print this out. Um, the design files are available on Thingiverse, so you can print your own. Very cool, very ambitious project. Okay, up next, very cool. This is Battle Bops and Cosplay Props. 
This is cool. This is from My Mini Factory. This is a campaign that they're starting. It really takes a look at like, let's repurpose like old mops and maybe a cool, clever way to get their employees to clean up around the office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so they came up with quite a few different things, mostly props from video games. So you got this very cool uh, sort of um, Warhammer thing. You got the scythe over here, and just a bunch of cool different bottle axes and things. So their 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 whole goal is to get people inspired to contribute to the project. And this is really cool. You, you normally you see a repo site, you know, that hosts STLs, but these guys have in-house designers. They are pumping out very cool designs for the community. So very very awesome work. You guys can download this stuff for free and print it out on your on your printer. Very best way to do content creation. Yeah, right. Very cool. A great use of, a, of like repurposing a mop, right? Super yeah, yeah. cool. I think okay. the best way to make that type of battle armor is to, or not armor, a uh, battle. Yeah, battle axe. Yeah. Okay, next up we have a very awesome contest. Here's a great way to win one of our favorite 3D printers, the Type A Series 1 machine. This is awesome. So this is a, uh, a contest from ha uh, Hackster.io and Autodesk. So their whole approach is to give your hardware a home. So they're, they're, um, they're saying, hey, design an enclosure for these projects using Fusion 360. You don't have to 3D print it. Just send us a, uh, a rendering of it and share your design, submit it, and you could win a Type A Machine Series 1. So right. First and second prize winner get yeah. a Type A, and you can't beat this you know, printer. It's Auto, very yeah. awesome. Yeah, Fusion 360 is a free app. It's a really powerful app. It's a lot like SolidWorks. Uh, it's got the engine of 123D, but it's super awesome and robust. I like how Check they give out. you three different designs to pick from. Yeah. First up, we have a very cool tiny Duino Wi-Fi door sensor. Okay. You know, design enclosure for that. A Raspberry Pi internet radio. And then a little imp weather, imp station. weather station. Yeah, so this is really cool. These are all Internet of Things projects. Very, very cool. Definitely a good approach to um, promoting software and, and getting the tools into people's hands, man. This is an awesome project. So if you're looking to win yourself a 3D printer, check out this, check out Fusion 360 and check out this, uh, this contest. Yeah, you got two chances to win a very awesome printer. Very cool. Okay, next up, all-in-one kitchen countertop device. What is this? This is a, like a cool space saver. This is like the future of a knife block. <laughs> so this is designed by uh, Kurt Hemwell, who saw um, the MakerBot NGE's first build countertop challenge. He wanted to do something about kitchen clutter, and so this gave him the idea to design this very space-saving, optimized device to hold all of your kitchen utensils. It's really cool. So cool. It has a lot of space for holding like your knives, measuring cups, spoons, timer, thermometer, peeler, corkscrew, matches. Um, a lot of people always say, you know, can you make, you know, PLA, you know, utensils? Uh, probably oh, the wrong way to say? go. Yeah, it's definitely a better approach to make something that can like store that stuff and make it more intuitive to use your tools. And I like that, that there's a like it's built for like a screen and an LCD so that you can like maybe pull up your recipes or integrate with other smart appliances around the house. This is like your central little station for all the things. So if you're looking for a, a cool countertop project. This is a really nice use case, man. I like this. It's useful. Yeah, you get the files on his Thingiverse page, page. Definitely check that out. Okay. And then the last story, we got another cool retrofitted mechanical keyboard. What's inside here? So this is retrofitted with a uh, Raspberry Pi B uh, Plus. Oh, wow. Very awesome. He had to actually slim down the B to fit inside the bottom tray of the mechanical keyboard there. Okay. He extended the USB, the um, HDMI, the uh, little audio jack, and 3D printed a little bracket to hold everything in place. Okay. So I really like uh, all the instructions are on um, his imager page. You see all the detailed yeah. layout for so that. So this is a little different approach. Instead of printing the whole keyboard, just fit your um, your Raspberry Pi computer in the, in the actual keyboard, and then just sort of um, you know create a, a bracket 3D printed. That's really where it works. Like you get a small part, you don't have to print all the buttons. You can just fit it inside. And I guess there's enough room in there when you you know you cut it in half or whatever. I'm yeah. sure an A plus might fit better in there. But this is cool that he's got all that juice and power in there. Yeah, so you can use it as a regular keyboard or switch back to using oh, okay. Raspberry Pi. That's great, it. man. It's so a great idea. Cool. Very cool. Check it out. It's on the blog, and uh, we also got a link for you guys in the description. Yeah. Go ahead, download the files, and create your own. All right. Well, you know what? That's it for the news, guys. If you want to check out more details, we have it on the blog for you, and there's links in the description below. So now, without further ado, we're going to take a break, take a look at the, this week's project video, and we'll be back here with our Q&A segment. Okay? Here's a few tips on 3D printing standoffs.
when you're designing an enclosure for 3D printing, it's a good idea to prototype sections before printing the whole project. So if you're looking to mount components to an enclosure, one of the best ways to secure them is with standoffs and machine screws. A standoff is basically a support structure that elevates a PCB so that it has enough clearance for the bottom. In this example, I have a standoff on each corner, so this levels out the PCB, and two mounting holes over here allow me to secure the parts together with machine screws. So what you wanna do is print out just the foundation with standoffs, and this makes it easier to revise your prototypes. I made a cutout in the center of the standoffs here, and this means it'll take less time to print the part, saving me both on time and material. When you fasten a screw through a 3D printed standoff for the first time, it'll actually create the threading for you, so you don't have to draw that in CAD. You want to adjust the size of your mounting hole so that it's actually smaller than the screw head itself. Mounting holes need to have a tight tolerance so that the machine screws stay in place. A standoff with a mounting hole should have a thickness of at least one and a half millimeters so that it doesn't break when you're fastening the machine screw. Applying a chamfer on the outer edge of a mounting hole creates like a 45 degree opening so that the screw head can get recessed into the surface. And you want to do that because otherwise the screw won't fit all the way inside, it'll stick outside, and it could scuff up other surfaces. And there you have it, just some quick tips on 3D printing standoffs for enclosures. I hope this helps you speed up your design revisions, and if you guys have any tips, go ahead and drop them in the comments. That'll help me out and other people too. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more 3D printing videos from Adafruit. I'll see you guys next time. All right, and there you have it. That is a cool little video on tips on making standoffs. Hopefully it helps you guys sort of speed up your prototypes because it definitely helps us, yeah? And this is mostly for uh, boards like the Raspberry Pi that has mounting holes, also the Arduino boards, and of course all the Adafruit boards have mounting holes typically on, this, on the little corners. So it's a really cool way to mount your components to your projects, yeah? Definitely a bonus. Uh, a bunch of other companies can't even round out their corners, so definitely <laughs> That's right. all the mounting holes on a lot of our boards. Okay, and then up next we have a very cool uh, something a little bit different. We're going to answer your questions. So this is where we answer your YouTube questions. So first up, this one's from The Tinkering Tech. Thanks guys for sharing your ideas and projects. I recently got a printer bot metal, simple metal, and getting trouble with having the printer's tape stick to the printer bed. I have good adhesion of the PLA to the tape, tried all the tricks like acetone wipe downs, et cetera, and nothing seems to work. My print always elevates as the PLA cools. How do you guys prevent the tape from lifting off the bed? Thanks. That's a great question, because we get that quite a bit, huh? When Definitely you're first starting out. a problem out. that we've experienced in the past, and uh, occasionally sometimes still do. Yeah. You forget to apply the tape um, in a certain way. So one of the tips that you can do, this is probably the tape that you're used to. I think we've tried like every type of brand that you can get at your local hardware store. The Blue Hawk 3M. Um, the problem is that when the PLA part is cooling, it's actually pulling on the bottom of your, P on your tape to mm -hmm. you know, lift it up. So what you can do is actually use a larger amount so that it's actually going over the bed and mm. then you're tucking it underneath so that it has, you know, less, it's a little bit more harder for it to lift up and off. Yeah, so the more length, the more surface area you have, the more harder it's going to be to get all of it to lift up. And even with, uh, so yeah, let's talk about this big blue tape here. This is one way to, to yeah. combat the problem is to have more wider tape. How wide is this? So this is the six inch um, wide tape that we have in the shop. From 3M, yeah? Uh, this is 3M Scotch. and this is definitely going to alleviate a lot of the tape lifting off just because of the larger surface area that it would have to lift off. Um, we still use the trick of, you know, make uh, having it longer than the bed and then tucking it underneath right. and that um, alleviates a lot of that problem there. That's right. So um, another thing too that uh, the you might not, that you have to check after you print, um, yeah, when you pry it's it. still going to lift it up. So what you mm. want to do is lift the tape up a little bit if it's not damaged and then just reapply it with uh, a flat you know, plastic surface like this. So what you're doing is you're sort of getting rid of those air bubbles that are introduced when you pry the print off or pop the print off. It'll sort of take the tape with it a little bit and getting it uh, unstuck. So you just gotta flatten it out again. And this is a nice one because it has a very smooth edge. So it's not gonna like rough anything up and stuff. So, yep. so there's a couple the tips. tips, yeah. Um, make it longer than the bed, tuck it underneath, or go ahead and get the wider um, tape. Yeah, and you can get 10% discount on it. Check it out. Yeah. All right, we got it in the Adafruit shop. 
Okay, next up, we'll go to the next question. This one is from Ronald Kim. Thanks for the video. Where can I purchase the power on and off switch? This is in response to the PrinterBot Metal Plus video that we did. Well, here we, let's take a quick look at the, the actual um, switch. Yeah, so we have these in the shop. Just search for 2.1 uh, barrel okay. uh, on and off switch. And this is a very handy little uh, guy here. We use it on the um, PrinterBot Plus, on the simple, a lot of the industrial machines don't have an on and off That's switch. That's right, like a rotary tumbler, it doesn't have an on and off switch, and this, is, this really helps um, sort of make it more convenient so you can turn it off and on without unplugging yeah. it. You don't want to rip, you know, rip it out of the wall. Yeah. It's very inconvenient, you gotta like get behind um, yeah. your machine to do it. Um, these come in several different um, variations. Styles, yeah. Two styles, you can get one with USB on each end, which is actually what we use for the LED oh, yeah, the strips back there. in the back there on the uh, shelves. Um, it's just an on and off switch so we can quickly turn it off. And a, an additional accessory you might want to think about getting is the 2.1 barrel extension too. So you can have the printer a little bit more closer to you for the way from the outlet. Okay. And it's a definitely an awesome little accessory for um, that you'll eventually end up using on um, a lot of these machines. Cool. All right. I hope that answers your question. You can get 10% off on your order. I'm going to check that out. Let's go to the next question, shall we? Let's take a look real quick at the next question. Let me queue it up. All right. This one is about AstroPrint. Is this app required to operate a 3D printer? Does it do anything that can't be done without it? I don't care so much for wireless, etc. I have a separate computer plugged into the printer in whichever way, USB, etc. Sorry, I'm a noob just trying to gather some info. That is just fine. We were all noobs at some point, but just AstroPrint is an image, it's an app dedicated for the Raspberry Pi or other Linux computers. And when you think about the, the Raspberry Pi, it is a dedicated computer for your 3D printer so that you don't have to have your printer tethered to it. And basically what it's doing is it just makes it so that it puts it on your Wi-Fi network. So that is the big deal about, um, about AstroPrint is that it gets your printer accessible through any other device. So you can manage it, you can print it. That's, that's the whole point of AstroPrint, is to make it wireless. So I hope that answers your question. Pedro, what do you think? So I think the easy, easiest explanation is instead of having you know, a full computer that has you know, an operating system, like mm, okay. Windows or Mac on it, and you know, a system update comes up and then just shuts your computer off you know, in the middle of a print. That would be terrible. <laughs> it, so what the Pi is doing is just you know, dedicated. You don't have any other bloatware on top of it. You don't have any you know, other processes that are just wasting you know, yeah. its clock cycle. All it's doing is just sending G code to the printer, um, and then eventually, I mean, you're going to need your laptop for you know designing the stuff. You don't want to have that you know completely tethered to that. Yeah. And uh, and I think the biggest thing is yeah, not having a computer that's running all you know, oh, yeah. wasting its time running crap that it doesn't really need to be running. Right. For us, as we started getting more printers, you kind of kind of need to manage them. You can't be uh, sort of moving your computer moving your computer over to the printer or having your printer moved or whatever. It really helps a lot. So um, like our Type A machine, it already has it built in. It has the Beagle Bone Black using OctoPrint, and we love it that way. We hope more printer manufacturers start incorporating more Wi-Fi stuff into their machines. I hope that answers your question. Yeah? OK, ne next up. This one's from Justin W. What are the measurements of the Pi? Where do I find the documentation? This is in response to the Raspberry Pi B Plus 3D printed enclosure project that we did. Um, it should be on raspberrypi.org. That is where I found it. It's actually not in a part as like the documentation. It was actually in a blog post. And um, you can find it there. You can do a Google search. I'm sure since m much more time has passed, I'm sure more people have shared it or maybe even traced it out in Vector. That would be really nice. But um, definitely check it out. It is up there, raspberrypi.org. They should get you covered. All right, that's going to be it for the questions. This is sort of our first uh, time doing the segments. If you want us to answer your questions, all you have to do is add, ask them away in the YouTube comments. That's right. You can leave it on any video. We use the studio app on our phone, so we'll eventually see your comment pop up no matter what, where oh, yeah. you post it on. So that's just right. Just ask away. We'll answer these in a future show. OK, that's going to be it for the show. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We're going to leave you with some cool links so you can check out more projects. Let me get that for you here. All right. Pedro, where can people find more projects? That's right. Our step-by-step -step projects live on learn.adafruit.com, so where you can get all of the circuit diagrams, all of the STL downloads, 
Demo code. The code. Sketches. All our beautiful photos. We work so hard at that. <laughs> sure. Get all the step by step there on all of our project. Get um, inspired by other ideas from past projects that everybody at Adafruit has yeah. uh, made. If you want to share your projects with us, you totally can. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we have a show and tell. We're there. A lot of other folks from Adafruit are there too. And a lot of people around the world come and share their projects. Right, show Very off cool. your awesome, cool 3D printer project, electronic project, or even just retro tech from years gone by. That's right. Cool. Also have a lot of the blogs on um, blog.afruit.com. Just search tag 3D Thursday, or just tune in on Thursdays. So it's just all 3D. Of 3D printing, <laughs> uh, posts, news from around the world, interesting stories that we share on the show, and a lot of them that don't get to make it on the show. You can follow me and Pedro. I'm at Ekin. You can follow me at VideoPixel and of course at Adafruit, Adafruit account. And yeah. Tune in for you know behind the scenes on Instagram, um, future projects coming up. Oh yeah. Also, right before we leave the show, we want to leave you guys with the discount code Standoff. Get yourself ten percent off on your order. It expires tonight, eleven fifty nine. It's good for today. Doesn't work on gift certificates or Eagle CAD. That's right. Load up on some 3D print accessories or some awesome electronic parts for your next project. That's right. That's going to be the show, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be here next week. So until then, you know, thanks guys. for watching. Go fly some drones now. Okay. All right, guys. Bye, everybody.